South Florida's members of Congress have always been among the most involved in crafting immigration reform, though for decades compromise has been elusive. This week, South Florida Republican Congressman Mario diaz Balart sponsored the latest reform bill and it passed the House this week by six votes. McClintock provides real solutions to restore order to the southern border, strengthen our national security, enhance our broken immigration system, and protect innocent minors while enforcing the rule of law. The rule of law, Mr. Speaker. So if you're Florida's member of Congress, members of Congress split right along party lines. Asterisk, Congressman Jared Moskowitz didn't vote. Congresswoman Sheila Sherfilis McCormick voted against the bill and also this week spoke out against the state law signed this week with stricter rules for migrants in the state. And with that introduction, Congresswoman, it is great to have you on the program today. Thank you so much for having me, Glenna. Nice to see you again. Thank you so much. So let's start out with that House bill that passed the House by six votes on Thursday. You were a no vote on it. Pretty sweeping, a lot of components. Why? What's your opposition? Well, the bill doesn't deal with the root cause. What it does is just a remain in Mexico policy that we've seen doesn't really work. Specifically, what we were looking at when I spoke to the Rules Committee on behalf of Foreign Affairs is that we see that more people are fleeing and coming into the country or trying to get to the border because of the instability in their own countries. And we have a responsibility to work through every single channel, especially our diplomatic channels, to incentivize people to stay in within their own countries. But just ignoring the root causes and sending people back to Mexico and thinking that's going to fix our solution is definitely what we should not be doing. So that was our main reason for being against this bill. But also, if we see the rhetoric that's been surrounding it, all the hate information, the hateful words, talking about who are real Americans and trying to define and divide our country, um, that's really what's at the heart of this bill also, is trying to fear monger people into believing that our borders are open, which in fact they're closed. No one's talking about how we've already confiscated over 400 million worth of federal all. Um, over 5,000 people who were carrying it on those lists. No one's talking about all the security places and mechanisms we have in place at the border, which is actually the truth. And so if we're going to deal with immigration, if we're going to deal with this migrant issue and this crisis, we have to be honest with the American people and be honest with our colleagues and stop fear mongering. At, at best, this is really petty politics, which is just there to get a headline. And if they were interested in putting forth a bill to deal with the root causes, we would look at the rise of authoritarian regimes, but we would also lend ourselves out more to increase democracies and incentivize people to stay home. Okay, so we actually talked a little bit about all of those things. I want to, let me rewind to the beginning because you just talked about a lot that frames our conversation, I think. The Remain in Mexico policy was actually a, a Trump era policy that was reversed by President Biden and put back in the courts. And now Secretary Mayorkas just this morning reiterated a fairly new directive that indeed migrants will have to apply, maybe not in Mexico, but whatever third country they come from, kind of a remain in wherever policy that it's in place right now under the Biden administration. So, so that's one I'd like to hear your perspective on. Um, number two, some of the components in this bill, which the Republicans actually said is just a start to your point, is um, resume building a wall, grants money actually for law enforcement at the border, uh, prohibits processing outside the legal ports of entry. In other words, people will have to come and apply in legal ways. Certainly that's something that by a bipartisan coalition can get behind those things, no? Well, there's certain aspects that we can get behind. Building the wall, I mean, this is a talking point that they have been doing from the Trump administration, and building a wall wasn't effective. That is not the right direction for us to go in, especially right now looking at this crisis. But when we talk about how expanding more um, border patrol, making sure that we have more security, that's something we can get, we can sign on to. But what they're really pushing is this narrative that every migrant who's coming to the border is being incentivized because the borders are open, which is absolutely false. They keep attacking Catching the narrative of migrants all carrying fentanyl, which is absolutely false. The truth is that the Remain in Mexico policy was actually blocking asylum seekers, political asylum seekers. That is one of our integral rules and beliefs that we have throughout the entire country and the world, that if you are an asylum seeker, you have a right to come in and plead your case. And one thing I want to mention also, millions of people try to get into the United States. Millions of people are turned away. If our borders were in fact closed, how would millions of people be turned away? 
other way. And that's when I say we have to be honest when we're talking to our constituents, when we're talking about immigration. We can't just keep on saying the borders are open when we know they're not. We spend millions of dollars protecting our borders. If our borders were open, how would we be able to get over 400 million in fentanyl? How would we be able to find the people on our terrorist list if our borders were open? So let me, so let me ask you this. I, to your point, this has been such political rhetoric on, on both sides that maybe part of the problem in, in coming to compromise is that nobody wants to let go of their talking points. We'll talk about that maybe, but, but what I wanted to really ask you is, we talked with Senator Scott, the, the borders, to your point, are not open, but are they insecure? Do you feel like as much fentanyl as being, is a, that is caught, as many smugglers that are caught, and of course there are, do you feel like there is a secure border? Or as Secretary Mayorkas just said this morning, there, there's a sea change in that it's the smuggled people by you know so many more smuggled people, misinformation, disinformation, spending their life savings on being told you can cross the border and then facing the reality. It is there an insecure border because of all of these components. Can, can you say that? Well, we can agree that there is insecurity at the border and we're working proactively to figure out how we can slow down and how we can make sure that the border is secure. Now, if we remember, there was a, um, a patrol a pilot program that the president announced, which is the parole program. We saw more people at that point were applying to come into the United States through that means, which is successful. However, we still have a lot of blockades getting into um, the United States. We still have a bottleneck because we don't have enough officials who are working at the borders. And what's going on in the country, we have have to take that into consideration. Um, this is the first time that we're seeing so much instability in the Caribbean, so much instability in South America and Latin America. And that's what's really driving everyone to our borders. People are actually risking their lives trying to get there, but it's because they're hopeless. And so we've had several conversations, especially in foreign affairs, on how could we help people be incentivized to stay home? I've had several conversations, even with the vice president, of how can we de-risk their economies by supporting them so people can invest in their economies and invest in making sure they have jobs at home. That is really our goal. But it seems as this election keeps ramping up, we keep going back to those old talking points of hate, build a wall, these illegals. If you have watched these hearings, it breaks my heart because I felt like we were one step away from saying that all immigrants are no good. People talked about who are real Americans. How dare you? Our country is made out of immigrants. We've all come here looking for a better life. This is the Everyone looks at the United States as a beacon of hope. So to be in those hearings, those committee hearings, and to hear that, it breaks my heart because we're actually rolling away from who we are as Americans. And we are that beacon of hope. We are a democracy. And we have a responsibility to assist our neighbors in keeping control of their actual democracies. We've seen an even rise in authoritarian regimes in the Caribbean, in Latin America. We're seeing China's being more and more effective in those nations because that last administration had a policy where they didn't intervene. They weren't good neighbors. And the truth of the matter is that Russia and China take advantage of that. And that's why we have so much insecurity. That's why we have so many people at our borders. Mm -hmm. And we have to address that. Certainly, South Florida knows that probably better than almost anywhere else in the country. Congresswoman Sheila Sherfilis McCormick, great to have you in the program and look forward to having you again soon. Thank you so much. Have a great day. You too. Thank you.